Hello, and welcome to this film, which is about half equations again. Um, this time we're dealing with polyatomic ions, so strictly speaking, this is part of the straight stage three course, um, but we'll be covering it in year 11 as well, just to provide a little bit of a challenge, I suppose. And um, hopefully by the end of this film, um, you'll be able to write half equations again, but this time you're going to be doing it for polyatomic ions. Um, and polyatomic species as well. So that is to say things that are made of more than one kind of atom. And of course we're going to be doing this for reduction and for oxidation. So um, the steps that we're going to follow here, um, which should be handy if you can keep in mind, so they're going to be appearing on each slide, um, quite similar to the ones that we've used before, but this time just a little bit more complexity here. So you're going to write down the reactants and products as you did before. You're going to make sure that the atoms that are reduced or oxidized balance so this time you're actually going to have to check because there's more atoms around you're going to have to check which one's changed oxidation number you're then going to balance any oxygens that have been used you're going to do that using water molecules and then balance any hydrogens that are around using acid or h plus ions and then your final step is like before where you use electrons to balance the charge Okay, well, let's have a look at an example first of all. Now, I'm deliberately choosing an example that you wouldn't have to use these rules for, but just to show you that these rules work for monatomic ions as well. Okay, so in this case, we're forming iodine, which is I2, from iodide ions. So, um, assuming that you've watched the other film, I can do this fairly quickly. We're forming I2, and we're doing that using iodide ions to start with. Now, that's what we used to do. Now we're going to make sure that the atoms that have been redoxed balance. Well, that's the iodines. Okay, so um, we've got to have two of those. I'm going to balance any oxygens using water. Well, there aren't any. I'm going to balance using any, uh, any hydrogens using acid. Well, there aren't any. So, um, again, you know, we can skip that step. Okay, but now we're going to make sure that any charges balance using electrons. And once again, as we've seen before, we add electrons to the side that is more um, positive. That's this side, because there's no negative charge, but there is here. Okay, and oxidation, once again, the electrons are appearing on the right. So that is just to show you, really, that these rules do work for the old um, monatomic half equations as well. But let's move on to a slightly more complex example now. So this is one that involves a polyatomic substance. So we're using hydrogen peroxide this time, and we're making oxygen from it. Okay. So we need to know something about the formulas here, but we're starting with H2O2, and we're ending up with oxygen. Okay, so I've written down the reactants products. Make sure that the atoms that are redoxed balance. Okay, well, what atom has been reduced or oxidized? Well, it must be the oxygen, because that's the only one that's there. Okay, and remember that oxygen in the peroxide is minus 1, and here it's an element, so it's gone to naught. Okay, so I'm going to balance them. They balance, there's two oxygens on each side. Now I've got to balance any hydrogens using acid. So there's two hydrogens here, so I'm going to have to add two hydrogens to this side. I'm going to do that in the form of H plus ions. And now I've got no charge over this side, a two plus charge over here, so I add two electrons to balance up the charges. And there's my half equation for polyatomic substance. So with more than one kind of atom involved. Let's look at another example. This time we're taking oxalic acid and we're forming carbon dioxide from it. Now this is a very commonly used um, reductant in, uh, in redox chemistry. Um, it's quite good as a primary standard. You can make solutions out of this um, knowing, that, knowing their concentration accurately. So that makes it good as a primary standard in titrations. What I know here is that it's oxidized to form carbon dioxide. So Carbon dioxide is going to be on the right-hand side. And um, what else do I know? Well, I know the electrons are going to be on the right because it's oxidation. I've written down the reactants and products as I know them, as I've been told. Make sure the atoms that are reduced or oxidized balance. Well, this time, I've got oxygen over here, which is minus 2 because it's in a compound, and it's minus 2 over here. So I don't start with the oxygens. I start with the carbons because the carbons, if you think about it, I've got four minus 2s here two plus ones, so altogether that's plus six, so the carbon must be um, minus three. No, sorry, altogether that's minus six, so the carbons must be plus three. And here we've got two minus twos, 
so the carbons are plus 4. So the oxidation number of carbons has gone up, that's why it's been oxidized. We've got to balance the carbons. I'm just going to change colour here because maybe the numbers are starting to get a bit confusing. So I'm going to put two carbon dioxides here to make sure that I've got the same number of carbons. Now let's balance any oxygens using water. Well, the oxygens are actually balanced already because I've got four of them here and four of them there, so I don't need to add any water. I'll balance some hydrogens using acid. So I've got two H pluses here, so two H plus. And this is a little bit like the last example in the sense that we've got two plus over here. So I add two electrons. Okay, let's look at some reduction processes now. Um, this one is talking about dichromate ions being reduced to chromium three plus. So this time the electrons are going to be on the left. Right, and again, I need to know something about formulas here if I'm going to write down the reactants and products. So dichromate ions are Cr2O7 2 minus. Okay, and we're forming chromium 3 plus. Now, oxygen can't be the one that's being reduced or oxidized here because there isn't any oxygen over here. So I'm going to balance the chromiums first, and I do that by putting a 2 in front of the chromium 3 plus ions. Now I'm going to balance any oxygens using water. Well, there's seven oxygens over here. So I need seven water molecules over there. Done that. So balance any hydrogens using acid. I've got 14 hydrogens here. So I need 14 H plus over here. Now I have a look at the charges and make sure I balance them using electrons. So I've got two minus and 14 plus here. So that's 12 plus on the left. I've got two Cr3 plus here, so that's six plus on the right. This side's more positive by six this time, so I add six electrons to the left-hand side. I must be able to tell that they're going to be on the left because I'm reducing this thing. It's gaining electrons, okay? Or in other words, the chromium's oxidation number is going down. Here it's seven minus twos and two minus, so that's 12 minus, so these ones are plus six, but here they're plus three. Okay, anyway, moving on and just doing another example. This time another reduction, and we're going for permanganate ions forming manganese 2 plus. So, permanganate ions, we need to know they're MnO4 minus, okay, and they're forming Mn2 plus. I'm going to look up manganese on my periodic table. I can also see this in the color chart on the waste data sheet. So anyway, let's make sure the atoms that are reduced or oxidized balance. Well, that's the manganese. Okay, how can we tell? Well, oxygen, four of them, minus two. There's a minus here already, so that's um, these. Uh, this lot have to add up to this minus, so this one must be plus seven. Okay, it's plus two, so it's been reduced. Okay, so I've balanced them. There's one on each side, so they're good. Balance any oxygens using water. I've got four oxygens over here, so I need four waters over here. And now I've got eight hydrogens over here, so I put eight hydrogens over there. And I check the charges. I've got two plus over here. I've got a total of seven plus over here, so I need five electrons on the left-hand side. And like the last half equation, actually, this one can be found on the waste data sheet, so you don't have to figure it out every time. Um, but there are cases where you do have to figure out the half equation, but they'll tell you what your... Um, starting with and what you're making. So in other words, you'll know what the reactants and products are and you'll just be able to use the rules to balance it. You won't have to write half equations for substances where, uh, for reactions where they don't tell you the reactants and products where the half equation is not on the data sheet. Okay, so if they expect you to just use a, use a half equation without telling you reactants and products, they'll give you the half equation on the data sheet. Anyway, Let's just finish off this film by looking at how uh, we might be able to write uh, one of these half equations by just looking at observations. So in this case, I've got hydrogen sulfide gas being bubbled through a solution. I don't know what that solution is. So hydrogen sulfide is my reactant. And a yellow precipitate is formed. Well, that could be sulfur, I suppose. So let's put sulfur over here on the right. Okay, and it's going to be a solid, but we don't need that state symbol. Okay, hydrogen is always plus one. Sulfur, in this case, will be minus two because there's two plus ones. And it's naught over here because it is an element, or rather it's an element. 
and so what's happened to the sulfur when it's been oxidized so I should expect to see the electrons on the right here but let's see how we go okay I've got oxygens are balanced so I'm going to balance the hydrogens plus 2H plus and now I've got two plus charge over here none over there so plus two electrons okay so um, that's a guide to writing half equations for anything with more than one atom in it Hopefully it made sense. I've gone through it quite quickly because I suppose you know something about writing half equations already. Um, if it was all a bit too quick, then obviously you can go back and watch it again. But if there's anything you don't understand or any mistakes that I've made, I'd love you to comment on YouTube or to come and see me and get some help.